It's the beginning. It's the beginning of an engagement process with the private sector. And some of these initiatives, frankly, take time to start to really gain momentum. If it's a question of are we moving in the right direction, I think many of the steps within the ERGP, uh, the EGRP, <laughs> and uh, many of the steps that have been taken so far are, cert are certainly steps in the right direction. What I suppose we hear from our CFOs is a certain level of impatience in terms of when these steps will translate to measurable things that really impact the business environment, impact consumers. I think those are the things that are, I would say, a question of time. So time will tell whether these things will yield the desired results. So speak to us on the CFO Outlook survey and what to expect from the next publication. Okay. Well, in, in terms of this survey, what we're seeking to do is to capture the outlook from a CFO standpoint as to how they see 2019. The presentation spoke to a number of factors that will shape the business environment in 2019. Our survey seeks to, in a sense, measure business confidence from a CFO perspective uh, when we look ahead to 2019, bearing in mind that it's a year in which we have the elections coming up as well. So we ask them questions around the outlook, how they see that outlook impacting on their business and you know, um, also the profitability of the businesses. The other section of the survey now looks inwards and really seeks to understand how chief financial officers are currently spending their time because that itself is an indication of the things that are top of mind and top priorities for companies. Um, the other section, the last section of the survey takes this whole issue of the um, uh, enabling environment for businesses and asks some focused questions around the sorts of things that from a CFO perspective, government needs to be prioritizing in order to really improve the business environment. It also asks a, a CFO perspective on this whole question of ease of doing business kind of asking them whether government is focusing on the right things. Yeah. From the results that you have, what's the answer to that? Well, what are the CFOs saying? <laughs> well, you know, we've just uh, um, launched the survey questions right now. Um, we're in the process of collating the results. Um, apart from the attendees who were here today who have completed the survey, we will be launching the questionnaire on a uh, much wider basis. We expect to gather all the results by the end of the year, and you know, I'll, I'll certainly be sharing with you but come January or early February the results of that survey. I think it will be very interesting to see uh, their perspectives. Now, before we talk outlook, uh, take us back briefly by talking us through what trends shaped Nigeria's economic position in 2018. Well, 2018, I mean, we've seen a number of factors. A key factor that always impacts the economy has been what happens to oil prices. And um, we, we saw, we've seen oil prices steadily increasing. And certainly during this third quarter, going into the last quarter of the year, oil prices have trended upwards. Um, we expect to see that having an impact on the economy. Certainly, we've seen the impact of um, uh, coming from oil prices. That means that there's more availability of uh, foreign currency, which in, in turn, therefore, helps in some respects to stabilize the economy. There's a growing question around the level of debt that uh, the government is incurring. And we had some interesting debates today around the debt to GDP ratio, which is an important indicator of capacity to borrow. But we also had uh, discussions around the debt service ratio, which is to say it's, it's all fine to have the capacity to borrow, but how much of your income are you using to service debt? So what side of the argument do you sit on? Debt to GDP, debt to revenue? <laughs> well, <laughs> well I, I think you've got to, cons the tr as with most things, you've got to consider both perspectives. Yes, you have the capacity to borrow more, 
but you've also got to be able to service the debt. And I think what it points to really is the underlying need to continue to grow the top line as well as to diversify the revenue sources. So uh, personally, I'm a firm believer in saying there's nothing intrinsically wrong with debt because you can use debt to grow the economy. But of course, you've also got to have the capacity to service that debt to make sure that it doesn't become a burden. So I would reframe the question and say, you know, the real question is how do we grow and continue to diversify Nigeria's revenue sources? And, you know, the government has started doing some things in that regard. There, when during the recession, there was certainly a huge focus on that in terms of looking at agriculture and other non-oil sources of revenue the expectation will be that now that oil prices are trending upwards again, we don't lose that focus, but we continue to push uh, the diversification and the growing of the non-oil uh, revenues.